Welcome back to The Sacred Life. I'm Shan Vanderleek, and today I'm chatting with my friend, artist, and soulful traveler, Lori Andrus. Lori is the founder of the Crystal Shaman School. With great joy and deep commitment, she artfully blends her background as an occupational therapist with nearly two decades of deep study in the areas of spirituality, earth-based healing, ceremony, and crystal wisdom. She's also the host of the Crystal Shaman Life Podcast, where she shares practical ways to bring crystal wisdom and sacred practice into your everyday life with 80 free episodes and counting. Welcome to this sacred life, Lori. Mm, thank you, Shan. I'm thrilled to be here. Man, I'll tell you what, we should have been recording our conversation before this episode even started. <laughs> right? Oh my goodness. All of the things that we talked about, chatted about in the places we went already. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So good. So good. Uh, and before that, I got still as I do and lit a candle and, and said a prayer and, and chose a goddess card to inform our time together. And the sacred rebels deck was calling me. Mm, and so, yummy. yeah, I chose what is already with you and Ooh. it's card number 17. And the message is you hold in your hand that which you seek, what you are seeking, perhaps by exploring far and wide is actually right under your nose. Of course, there is unlimited creative potential and always something more that can be Yet in this instance, it is important for you to know that you already have what you need and what you want. Acknowledge that everything necessary for success is with you now. And of course, that goes on and on. But I wonder how that oracle is speaking to you and, and how it's resonating with you. Wow. I just had just a big wave and I, I, it was like, I landed right back in right here, fully into our conversation. Um, I was curious, uh, with all the fun conversation and the, the magic and the sacred shares that were unfolding before we hit the record button. Um, I was curious, where is this going to go? How deep is this going to go? And wow, this just really pulled right in. You know, I think the thing that jumps out to me is that so often we are on a path, we're on a journey, we're on a you know spiritual quest, we travel, we experience life, and there is this searching type of energy that comes with us. We're looking for something. And I think I love how you know the card is all about. It's all within you. It's there. And I think there's you know layers to what that means, but I think the return to self is so important. One of the things that I re received as a message this summer was a super crystal clear dream. I woke up with, with these words just echoing. And the final words in the dream were, it is time to come home. And I knew that it wasn't just about me going like physical home. That wasn't what it was about. It was about the going home within self and mm. really receiving that, that, that sanctuary that our self is, that our sacred vessel is as home. And mm. that it's not only about me, but that's the time we're in. It's the collective thing that's unfolding right now there's the personal piece you know it happened it came up in my dream but i think we are all being called home yeah. right now we're being called to our to be more present in our physical world and within our physical bodies and to be more embodied and i think this is a really potent and powerful time so what a great card to have pulled as we're kicking off this this uh conversation today <laughs> <Shan>. know, right <laughs> And, and when you, when you look at the card, it's, it's two hands palm together, but hands open like a chalice and butterflies are flying out. Wow. And then behind that is some sacred geometry. So it, it's quite lovely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. One of the reasons why I reached out to you, Lori, beyond the fact that I just adore you is that you enjoyed and experienced a sovereign summer on your land in the UP. Mm -hmm. and celebrated a, an anniversary, I think a year anniversary of, of owning 
yeah, purchasing that land and and making it into this incredible sacred space. Uh, tell me about your summer living on the land. <laughs> it was it was really amazing. Um, you know, I think this card actually speaks to it as well. And there was an element of simplifying that came forward for us this summer. Um, chop wood, carry water. Oh mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> that is. We literally did that. <laughs> but um, it was beautiful in that my husband, being a teacher, was off of work, and I made an agreement that I would follow through on whatever I had committed within my work, but and then do my weekly Facebook lives. But beyond that. We agreed that we would take the time pretty much off and that's kind of a, a big deal. It's not an easy, you know, not an easy thing in, in our world right now to just kind of step back and, you know, push pause for a bit, but we, we agreed this, agreed to this. And so we really sank into just being on this land and Shan, you're kind of familiar with that area. It's, um, totally. 10 acres. Yeah. 10 acres just South of Houghton on a little inland lake that is a private lake, super quiet area. We are at the end of a two and a half mile driveway slash road back to our land. We are the end and next to us, the people have 50 acres. So they're, they're a good distance away. And the people who are closest to us, we don't really see them, you know, like there's, we, yeah. we can, we absolutely can, which is great. But there's this feeling of really being remote. It feels more remote than it probably really is. <laughs> well, but, when you were when you you posted um, some video of you driving back to the land, yeah, and I've driven that road, or mm. several roads that look like that road. So yeah, I, yeah. And so it was like just like, oh yeah, she really is as remote as I think she is, even though you're only what half an hour away from wherever you might need to go. Yes. You know, yes. to be a part, to be a part of things out there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That, that was kind of what it was. It was like, oh, if we want to, we can go into town. We can, we are, you know, seven miles from Lake Superior. We can go to Lake Superior. There were things that we can do, but we we really found that what was most um, nourishing and exciting and fulfilling was being on our land. Mm -hmm. And we do have water. We don't have a home. We now have a woodshed that is finished. Yeah. <laughs> and um, we had our camper and a screen tent. And our camper is an 18 foot teardrop camper. Um, and we rented a porta potty and took showers in our driveway. I mean, it, it was like, it was very, very simple, very, yeah. very simple. Uh, we did have a water tank that our neighbor really kindly filled for us. And you know, stuff like that. We had things, we had some nice luxuries, but we really kept it simple. And I remember one day we were at the point of, I think we need to do some laundry. And my husband said, yeah, I think, I think, you know, maybe tomorrow I'll run into town and, and do some laundry. And instead it's like 11 o'clock in the morning and he's, he comes up and he's got a tub full of water from the lake. <laughs> <laughs> Just looked at him and I'm like, what are you doing? I'm doing laundry. <laughs> That's awesome. It was, it was really funny. Um, but, and we didn't need to do that, but it was, there was something about it, about being that simple and allowing ourselves to just realize how much we keep ourselves cluttered, keep our yeah. lives cluttered and busy and full of things that maybe are just distractions and just creating busyness yeah in different ways it's funny because you know you think about a washing machine and it's definitely a convenience and it helps and the stuff like that but there was a different rhythm that we sank into by <laughs> washing our own laundry oh yeah so yeah one of the things that i absolutely love about the social media is being able to follow my friends in a way that i can be a part of what they're experiencing and mm -hmm. I felt like that with you this summer because the choices that you make and the things that you love are, 
are also dear to me in, in many ways. And so I would see the, the morning fire and the lake and know that you were out swimming or kayaking or whatever, or watching the Eagle fly by or whatever, and mm-hmm. watching the season change and just being in this gorgeous, sacred space. And while cleaning things up and and building the woodshed and making the choices that you were making for ceremony space. And just all of that is so rich. Yeah. You know, there's something about having a piece of land that has never been touched, Shan. And Mm -hmm. this is a piece of land that aside for the driveway and the camper pad and the electrical that was put in, it really has not been touched. Yeah. We would dig into the land and we would see the layers of glacial deposit. Mm-hmm. To me, this was just like mind blowing <laughs> to see <laughs> to yeah. see these like these actual layers, like the glacier moved in this direction and it was left a layer and then it left another layer and the layers were distinctly different. And it was like, wow, nobody has cut into the earth here. Yeah. Nobody has cut in. Wow, how fascinating. Yeah. So it's like ancient, ancient, ancient deposits of sand. So mm. sand and silt and all that fun stuff. Yeah. No, it's mm-hmm. just gorgeous. It's such a such a gift. And so how did this time, how did this sovereign summer? Because that's what I'm calling it apparently. Yeah. Change yeah. you. How did it change you and your relationship with your husband and Mm. Um, I think there's so many ways. Um, one of them being that the, the way this land came into our lives was quite magical. And so there was this very outside of our control, synchronistic series of events that unfolded, that brought it into our lives. And that in itself really set a tone for uh, how we were going to experience it and relate to it. And I think that for us built this summer, um, in, our, in our sovereign summer, I think um, we realized how important it is to really tune in and listen and receive and welcome and invite the the co-creative energy because it it really has felt like spirit was co-creating with us the land itself is co-creating with us and opening that space to um to really create a new path and i think with that there's a part of us that would love to hook into a plan. Like, this is what we're going to do. We're going to build something, you know, at this, at this point, and we're going to do this and we're going to do that. And, you know, all the things that are traditional when someone buys land and what we're realizing and what we're experiencing is that the land actually reveals to us what the next steps are. It calls forward the, the right people and shares, you know, like there's like a, a really organic thing that that's happening there. And so that's, there's this level of trust attuning to like the rhythm of life and the flow, like the natural flow of life, you know, so we can look at it from the moon cycle. We can look at it from the seasons. We can look at, you know, the actual ways that the earth itself is revealing this cycle and letting ourselves really be one with that rather than trying to, to push any, any sort of agenda and allow right, right. it all to unfold because it does. Yeah, it, sure. It, really it does. does. What yeah. a gift. What a gift. Yeah. yeah. And you recently were talking about and writing about how to lean in when life and, and the season change direction. Talk a little bit more about that. Oh, we're in this place of change in, in the world. And I think not a lot of us um, are being presented with opportunities to reconsider things that we've valued in the past and, and not from a place of like, in somewhat, for some of us, it may feel a little pressuring for some of us, it may feel real natural, but as we look out at, you know, what's happening in the world, we have this 
sense of what we're being told, what, you know, and that comes in all forms that can be even include me, um, we're being told what's happening, but, but really we have this opportunity to really drop back into ourselves and, and listen, what is right for us right now. And then, so there's this piece of like dropping in, leaning into, into self, but then also like leaning in, in the places where we recognize in alignment, in support, or where people have taken the journey that perhaps some part of us is being called towards and letting ourselves be supported, the lean in for support. So it's like this dance of like lean into the change lean into yourself and lean in to community support kind of circle energy. Um, I think, mm -hmm. you know, we've been hearing for years that phrase of the time of the lone wolf is over. And I think we're experiencing that right now in a new way in that we're really the way through what's unfolding in the world and um, the way to create our lives in a way that feels soulful and nourishing and in alignment is to really lean, lean in to community, to mm -hmm. lean in to spirit support. So yeah, great question. It's the dawning of the age, age of, of Aquarius. Aquarius. <laughs> Aquarius. <laughs> Aquarius. Oh, if only I had my tambourine. It's downstairs, darn it. Right? I've got a rattle here. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes, yeah. yes. Leaning in. And yeah. I yeah. completely I'm on the same page with you and in, in all of that. And yeah. the what am I letting in? How am I being mindful about? each moment really and yeah. how much spaciousness I need and how much community and I am an only child so mm -hmm. when you say lone wolf I can totally identify with that but thanks to my work over the years with the Earthwalk community and podcast and transformation goddess and all the, the stuff of course mm -hmm. I have a wonderful community of support I do right I don't I probably don't ask for enough. It's easier for me to give like it is for so many than it is to receive <laughs> from community. Yeah. But what I noticed this summer is that I have been open to receiving in a, in a different way, in a energetic way that will land in community as well. If, if that makes sense. So just yeah. by, by the sheer, yeah allowing of it by, by saying, I am open to receive, I am open to receive by, by taking the, the journeys on Lake Michigan and all of the choices that I've made to open up to receive. And yeah. so that I also can, can do my part as, as a leader at, at this time, whatever that may look like, but then to also avail, make myself available to receive from the community that I'm a part of. Exactly. Exactly. Shan. You know, I think that phrase you used about like really just, it almost sounded like a mantra. I am open to receive. I am open to receive. And mm -hmm. I think it just a lot of us have had experiences that have told us it's not safe to receive and, or there's expectations and hooks and, you know, on and on and on reasons why we have shut down that part of ourself that is able to receive. And so having a mantra like that opens up that space and then the the ways to receive the people who are there to support and the ways that we are supporting you know full circle like the full circle of that they show up they just show up yes yeah, yes yes yeah like yep miracles yes yes i think you know when you were sharing that one of the things that was coming up for me was the i want to circle back to the woodshed because we the woodshed was started and not finished and that was one of the things that chris and i really wanted to do but it is not our skill set and life just didn't coordinate to get family up supply prices are a little higher than typically for this year because of all of that's unfolding in the world and we kind of just decided we would put it on the side well 
wouldn't you know, our neighbor has um, a project he was working on. He had leftover materials and he loves working on projects. And he just popped up one day and started working on the shed. And now <laughs> we have a finished wood shed. It was one of those things where I think in the past, that might've been one of those things where I went, no, no, don't touch my yard, stay out yeah, of my yeah. yard. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, I know, I know myself, I would have really fought that the like energetically and sure. something this summer, like there were just a series of events that unfolded throughout the summer that required us to just step back and say, can you help me? Mm -hmm. And, you know, what do you know about this and, you know, ask questions. And, and I think that's one of the big pieces is that we, we get in our own way, uh, but um, letting ourselves just uh, step back a little bit. So yeah, mm. that right there, that's, that is pure magic. Mm -hmm. Oh, I just mm -hmm. happen to have these yeah, I just happen to have these extra supplies and and the ability to uh, to build this thing. So yeah, yeah, <laughs> and, I and know. You, <laughs> and you letting it happen, and that's yeah. it's it is magic when when we do that and when we allow that it, because it is allowing. It is, it is, and I think it's also really you know honoring where our skills are and where others are and being mm -hmm. able to celebrate that and mm -hmm. you know i think in business we see this and we do this you know we know how to do this right right but in life sometimes we don't always and i was raised to really know how to do everything like yeah. you know you you need to learn how to do everything and i think there's value to that there's a lot of value to that but i think we're also in a time where it's really important that we are celebrating in each other's uniquenesses and the unique talents that we have and bring mm -hmm. to the world and let them really shine. And one of the ways we let them shine is by, by leaning in and asking for support, letting ourselves receive and, and sharing and showing up and sharing as well. Right. When right, someone right. else leans in and asks, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I need yeah. to know what crystals, yes. what crystals are you working with right now? Oh my goodness. Um, so <laughs> so uh, I've got a big old smoky in my hands right now. It's like a grandfather smoky. Mm -hmm. um, I bought it last summer when Chris and I were in South Dakota. And I think it came from Brazil. That's what the, the shop owner told me. He, it's beautiful. It's absolutely gorgeous, but it's super, super grounding and connecting with the earth. And I think, you know, right now, though, like anything that is going to support us in doing that. So that could be smoky quartz. It could be basalt. I think basalt is such a great stone for that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, it is, it is amazing. I made a pair of basalt earrings this summer and I wore them every day. I couldn't take them off. It was just like, oh my gosh, I just felt so grounded. Black stones, brown stones, you know, stones that will connect us, red stones that will connect us to the earth and really support us in feeling safe and um, secure and connected in being fully present in our bodies, being fully connected to the earth. Those are the, those are the stones that I think are really important to be working with right now. How about you, Shan? What are you working with? What are you playing with? <laughs> that gorgeous chrysocala that you showed me yeah, before. Yeah, <laughs> the chrysocala, the, the treasure that found in my house mm -hmm. many moons after moving here. And I have recently made sure that I have selenite in every room of the house. Yeah. Oh, good move. That was a smart move. Yeah, I was buying some for my daughter's new apartment. And, and I thought, okay, this is something you've wanted to do. And so let's, let's get that done. And then a friend at a, my matriarch ceremony gave me a beautiful piece of labradite. Labr oh yeah. How do you say right? Labradorite. Labradorite. Yeah. I, mm -hmm. Saying the names of these sometimes is a little challenging for me, but it's a definitely very at home in my hand mm. and feels very, very good. But I also have a lot of Lake Michigan stones, more Petoskey stones than, than you can imagine, as well as several <laughs> other 
like lining the entrance of the main entrance of our house Ooh. and the windows and doorways and when when you come to visit me yes <laughs> <laughs> we'll just kind of crack up at, at all of, mm -hmm. all of that but but right now these are what these are what are in my office and the the chris yeah. the chrysocolla i pulled off of my altar because it's just this it's so incredibly vibrant it's the it's and it's raw so yeah it, it yeah. feels nice but yeah but yeah i'm having a, a different you know thanks in big part to you a much different relationship with all of the the crystals that i have in in my world what wonderful allies and so much beauty and and it just letting yourself be drawn to what you're drawn to um, right is is nice as well and yeah. I have my very, very first crystal ever given to me as well. It's this, <laughs> this ah. wonderful tiny piece of amethyst that was given to me by a friend. You know, it's one of those stones that you lose and find mm -hmm. and lose and find and carry and lose and find. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> and, I know those. <laughs> and, yeah, yeah. And so that's kind of always around yeah. and lovely little, just a love lovely them. little friend yeah yeah it's such a fun thing to have those that are kind of always around because there's there's something there that's like just a little fun magic so yeah, um, yeah. and the yeah. woman who gave it to me is just such a what a beautiful beautiful soul she is yeah. and so even though it's probably been 10 years now she's i still think of her when yeah 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 which oh, i like i like that as well yeah 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 there's um just one more stone that i want to just kind of throw in because yes, please. it's the stone that's um present for the year and i think this is a really important one um every year i do a, a forecast for the year and i pull a stone for each month and then a stone for the year and the stone that came forward for the year for the collective was lepidolite mm. and um, this popped up into my awareness when you were talking about putting the selenite in each of the rooms and lepidolite um, is one that I've often told people to do that with as well. And it's um, it's a mica with um, manganese and lithium and um, which is the, I think it's the manganese that gives it the purple color. Everyone wants to say it's the lithium, but it's not. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but with the lithium, what it does is creates this energy of being able to be present with emotions, like the emotions of uh, that may be more repressed, that may have been difficult ones. And, you know, during this time, as things have been surfacing collectively, wow, what a great stone to show up as an ally for the year, as all of these repressed collective emotions are coming to the surface yeah. and they need to be honored. They need to be acknowledged. They need to be healed. It's like, it's tempering that the extremes of it's showing up to temper the extremes of emotions this year. So mm. that's a great one to be working with as well. If, and uh, so pretty. Yeah, it is. It is. Mm -hmm. I find myself as of late being really attracted to raw, the raw crystals versus the polished yeah. ones. I, I yeah. you know, don't know what that's about, but I mean, I, I like them all. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> I'm with you on that. I like something raw and meaty and like yeah. earthy. I like to know that it just came out of the earth like that. Right. Oh. right. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Tell us about your current offerings. I know that the sanctuary is opening yes. soon. What's that yes. all about? So um, it's a annual membership where, and membership maybe isn't exactly the right word for it as I'm saying it right now, but, um, but it is a membership. We, we sink in and we flow together, honoring, um, working with the moon cycle. And so it's a journey deeper within that combination of going within and expanding without. We'll be working with the moon cycle. So new moon is a call to action a message so like kind of a like a soft call like that soft awakening call mm -hmm. to action and then we'll have community q a and then every full moon we're going to have a full moon ceremony and really stepping into that place of reconnecting with the sacred reconnecting within mm -hmm. and discovering how do we make that how do we bridge that how do we bridge 
the sacred experiences within ourselves in our everyday lives? How do we integrate that? Because for everyone that looks a little bit different and the beautiful thing about being in community is that we can hear what is working for other people or where other people are struggling and, um, and opening up that space to just have beautiful, meaningful conversation around what's unfolding in life and how can we, how can we rock what we're doing even more? And how can we sink deeper into a connection with self that in, and a connection with sacred in a way that's meaningful and empowering. So that is open. Um, we begin that at the beginning of November, uh, we'll begin with the November new moon. So super Beautiful. excited about that. Yeah. And yeah. this is, this is an online offering or yes, it is. Okay. That's it's online. Doing. Yeah. Okay. Um, this last year I did a lot of experimenting with, uh, ceremonies online and different ways to do them. It's kind of fun. So <laughs> I'm excited to go in this way too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Well, yeah. you're very natural at it. It seems very, like very easy for you to do. Mm. I'm just like, I can Thank remember you. the first time I did a, a journey with you. And mm. I mean, it's been a long time ago now, but um, another gift brought to us by the current state of affairs, mm-hmm. figuring out how to be with each other, even right. if it is with a screen yes. uh, in, a, in a way that can still be very sacred and very potent. Precisely. Yes. Mm-hmm. Well, my dear, our time is has come to an end today, <laughs> but I can't even express how much I appreciate you, how much I see you mm-hmm. and honor the way that you choose to, uh, to walk in this world and, and show up. You are you. such a delight. Thank you. The feeling is mutual, Shan. Thank you. It's been a delight to be here today and to be here on your podcast. Thank you. That was Crystal Shaman, Lori Andrus. If you want to learn more about how to connect with your favorite crystals, visit lauriaandrus.com for a free seven-day crystal immersion journey. And also be sure to check out the sanctuary.